Hi, Mark. Hi, Steph. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. How's ben Sorry, doing? I had some technical difficulties starting the meeting, so. <laughs> That's all right. Ben's doing good. He's uh, headed to the Air Force at the end of December. Is he really? Yeah, intelligence. Good for him. He yeah, can leave a little here with Luke. <laughs> He's, uh, he's excited about it, so. Well, Sam, I know that Randy, Randy just texted me. He said he's running late getting home. He'll be home in a few minutes. He'll log in. Okay. Um, I know Dave was logging in. He said he was down in North Carolina, but he said he was going to log in. Adeline is there. Yep. Lily just texted me. She'll be on in a few minutes. Um, Dan was going to try to get in. He, he said he had a... He had a he had rented an excavator and if he didn't finish the job he had to return it tomorrow so he was going to dig until he was done <laughs> so it didn't let me in at first just so you know so yeah i i was having some problems starting the meeting so let me shoot dave a text here Dave's probably going to that same meeting with me at 6.30. Hi. Hi, Hi Lily. Hi. Hi, Lily. Hi. How's college? College is okay. College is pretty good. You know, hanging in there, <laughs> staying inside. Yeah. Yeah. You're not getting the full college experience. Not yet, I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure you'll sometimes, make time for it. <laughs> sometimes that's good. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> and Karen had indicated she didn't know if she was going to make it, so. So are we just waiting on Dave then, or? Yeah, Randy said go ahead and start, and he'll join as soon as he gets home. Okay. So let me see. Dave, I'll see if Dave answers his text message. But like I said, he's in. I think he's in North Carolina. You know what, Sam, I'm going to say we'll go ahead. So if you want to get started, um, sure. I, you, you know I'm going to put you on the spot with all these the big important things, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you want to get started on the agenda then? Yeah, I think, I think if you, don't they, won't you see them beep in or something on your end if they join? Yeah, yeah, so. nobody's, I have to like admit people, so. Okay. Um. So I guess town activity updates. Um, the Obviously the beaches are closed now. I'll start with Onanda. Um, I had given a little update to the CIC meeting last week. And um, I looked at what the gate revenue was compared to last year because we were seeing a lot of like an increase in the use of the park. And the gate took in almost $20,000 this year um compared to 2019 which was 13,000. So, it was, you know, quite a big increase um at Onanda. The cabin rentals were lower. I don't think there was as many rentals and that number in our system is a little harder to get because it includes revenue for cabins rented for next year. So, it like if I took the revenue from this year, it doesn't show how much was this year versus next year and uh but 
yeah, the, I thought that was interesting that the gate took in about $7,000 more this year. Um, the, we did got two um, roofs being done at Onanda, the uplands, the bathhouse, that roof is uh, completed. Uh, King Hall is almost done. Um, so that's good. Parks maintenance staff is uh, cleaning up, doing mowing. I, I know I told you guys at one of our last meetings that the mowing contract was one of the um, budget cuts. So, you know, Troy and his staff are busy mowing and weed eating and all that kind of stuff. Um, in the next month or so, we're going to release the RFP uh, for mowing for next year. That is in the budget. Um, and then we're looking at getting some new signs ordered for Onanda, getting another one at Miller Park, um, a trail map that um, gives like the distance around the loops and down to Bliss Road and all that. So that one's, um, we got a quote on that. So hopefully we can get that ordered. Uh, we got some new picnic tables, um, some nicer ones that slide easier, won't break as easy. And so, yeah, n no recreation this year. So, you know, kind of just they're cleaning up and all that. So that's my update. How was the, um, how, how did the city program make out? Did they, they ran their city program? They did. They, um, they usually run it for six weeks, but they only ran it for five. You know, they had to reduce the capacity. I don't believe they did field trips or any of that stuff, but it was good. Um, and then also we have a, the ARC runs a camp down at Onanda. They use the arts and crafts building and they usually are down there for a week and they had to limit their participants and they they love it down there so they actually stayed an extra week so they ran their camp for two weeks down there that was they uh were really excited they like it down there so that was kind of cool anybody any anything else anybody questions or anything thoughts about the summer wreck or any any i know troy was i mean poor troy was busy with his staff trying to keep the parks mode so yeah I, I think, yeah I think some of the, the budgeted things and some of the, the master plan things kind of got bounced to next year because Troy just simply didn't have the time this year to, to do those yeah. things. I, I still saw those guys running around trying to, you know, do a few things at the park here and there too. So. Yeah. Between mowing and all that too. I mean, they have to do the cabin turnovers and all the rentals at all the other parks too, outhouse and schoolhouse and all that, and then take care of, you know, a toilet that breaks and, you know, all that, you know, all that little stuff. So they were definitely still busy. So. And, and then also for everybody's information too, we did, there were, I was in on a couple of emails there back and forth. They did have a little bit of vandalism issues. Was that mainly an outhouse? There was maybe a sink and a bathroom and a toilet ripped off the wall and a few things like that. So it seems to be mainly at Onanda Uplands in Pierce Park for some reason. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, the one thing did happen at Outhouse, someone ripped a sink right off the wall. Um, you know, Pierce Park is usually there's beer bottles, people rip down signs and, but we haven't had anything in the, about a, I think it was about a month that the Outhouse bathroom yeah. thing happened and that was the last vandalism we heard of. So. And, and, but, and Doug has talked talked about touching base with Spectrum about the possibility of maybe some some better internet connection to if, if, if these things continue we'll be able to maybe hook up some security type cameras and you know take advantage of some of the, the Spectrum wireless which kind of in this day and age it's getting so maybe there's more and more of that that's going to be needed so yeah. but yeah um so so the next big thing and it, the budget overview, Sam. I know you you you've been waiting to talk about the budget. Yeah. So yeah. Your smile. Did you see your smile like that? Yeah. <laughs> I did. I'm actually gonna share my screen right now with you guys, um, and I'm gonna just kind of show you a brief overview of the budget. Um, parks lines start with a seven. Typically, most of them are sevens. Um, so like this is our very first line. This is for our senior lifeguard. So up at the top here, the main ones that you would be interested in are the 2021 tentative is what Doug is presenting to the town board. And then department head would be what I put in. 
and then 2020 ad adopted is what the budget is currently for this year. Um, so the last three lines, you know, is what you would look at. Um, so I know Karen had sent a question about a 7% increase. Oh, Randy's coming in. Okay. Sorry, I had to add Randy in. Um, so over here, you'll see the 20, this is the one she was talking about. This is the 2020 salary. I um, recommended a 2% increase, which is here. And that's what um, Doug also is putting forward. She was looking at this memo here and that's what the employee requested. Uh, but what is actually being the salary is 2%. Does anybody oh, so have any questions on that? He requested a 7% increase? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's going to the town board from Doug as 2% yeah. from the 49 here to the 5337. So, um, because pretty much all across the board, you know, Doug said, you know, due to the current financial situation, 2%. So, totally. um, and then these are our seasonal labors. That's all gatehouse part-time. Okay. So this line here, the 200 line is our capital line. Um, so this is the total amount that Doug is putting forward to the town board, 277000 And this is kind of how we break, bro broke it down. So, you know, we are going to look into ADA access at Butler Road Beach, $5,000. Blue Heron parking lot, $45,000. So this is kind of where we break it down into certain um, uh, items. Um, and and, and really, these are things that have come out of our master plan that, that these are the goals and these are many of the things where they, um, you know, looking back at that master plan, a lot of it was ADA compliance and, and upgrading. Yeah. So, so this isn't, you know, someone just pulling figures and, hey, let's do this. So a yeah. lot of this really is based on the goals from the master plan. Like the, all the blue hair and stuff, that's all right out of the master plan. The roofs, we follow our capital plan uh for those um the softball field improvements at pierce park which i had put money in for but i think doug took it out that's why it says a dollar <laughs> um but yeah so that's the 200 line does anyone have any questions on any of that stuff yeah the parks truck why why are trucks in the park budget so we also have an equipment replacement policy too and our parks trucks are are old and they need to be replaced so um you know for roofs and equipment and vehicles there's a whole policy that the town board has adopted for you know replacing those items so i was just wondering why it wasn't in highway so i guess if it was in parks before that makes sense yeah um, so then the next one is the 201, the 7110 201. This is the um, budget line that only certain things, we can only spend on certain things because it comes from that park and rec fee. Um, so that's why there's, most of it has to go into 200, but there are certain things that we can put into this line. And all of this, except for the pirate ship, um, the outhouse west the blue heron horseshoe courts fishing that's all right out of the master plan and actually was in the 2020 budget but just couldn't couldn't get to it um and i know karen had a question about this 250,000 here this is um like a placeholder in case you know in our master plan it says to like expand our parks and our offerings and this is kind of just a placeholder in case an opportunity presents itself for the town so Any questions, sorry, any questions on that budget line? Nope. So you'll see there the total for that one is 49500 right over here. And, and, and Sam, a lot of this really what we've done is, is the things that weren't able to be accomplished this year with, 
Right. Um, all the changes with COVID and everything kind of got rolled over. I mean, Blue Heron was going to be the focus of yep. summer, you know, of Troy's entire summer, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it, try to do some of these things. So a lot of these things really just rolled over that were approved for last year. Yep. Um, and then this 400 line here uh, for 96,000, that is like kind of our miscellaneous one, I would say. You know, all of our paper goods, our cleaning products for Onanda, toilet paper for Onanda, all that stuff comes out of here. And then um, the big one is the contract and mowing here for 62,000. That comes out of this line too. But um, then you'll see it's just kind of, you know, miscellaneous there, fees and trainings, getting some new grills, our GPS service, trash cans, you know, paint, keys, all that stuff. Okay, next line, uh, 402, uh, 5,300 in the budget for that. This is just our landscaping line. So you'll see stone mulch flowers for 2,500, trees at Blue Heron and trees at Outhouse West. 802,000. Next line, 404. This is um, a line for the Auburn Trail, $10,000 in um, that budget line. Uh, the next lines are personnel lines. This is our lifeguard line, our recreation line. Um, all those are figured up on the wage and the hours. Um, the next one, 714200. This is our recreation um, line. Actually, there's nothing in that in that capital line. Um, and the next one, recreation contractual. This is first aid supplies, a lifeguard stand for Butler because it's actually not a very good stand for them to be using. Um, that was in this year's budget too. We just didn't just didn't get it to it. Uh, but all the lifeguard supplies, um, the shirts, the recreation supplies, stuff for Onanda, you know, ping pong paddles and balls and all that. Um, 405 is the movie night line and there's no detail, but the total for that looks like 1500. Um, so that would give us enough money to do one movie night next year. Any questions on that? No. Okay. Um, and then the next line is just our day camp. We, um, you know, pay for, I, I don't know if it's quite half, but, um, you know, for all the um, expenses that come with that day camp program. And those are our lines. And then the adult recreation contractual line, there's 2,500 in that one, which is the same from 2020. So any questions on the budget from anybody? Okay. And, and so Sam, that, I think that, does that go like the next, I, I was looking at the minutes for the, or, or the, the agenda. So that'll go to the town board um, but next week. It, it, so is, is this the tentative budget that goes to the town board or is this the, the budget that's been approved by the town board? No, it hasn't it been approved yet. This is the okay. tentative budget that goes to the town board. Um, and then um, I don't know. And then it'll turn into a preliminary budget. Then they'll have a public hearing on it. Um, and okay. then once they have the public hearing and all that, it'll be the um, adopted budget. Okay. Okay. That wraps that up. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and again, we can, we can whip through a lot of these things. I, I've met with Sam and, and Doug, and we talked about a lot of these things. Kind of more informational right now. The, the biggest thing is a couple months ago, we put out the information about looking over the town code. Um, and there are a lot of things in the town code that, that reference uh, a director of parks and rec and, and really some semantic things and a few little, little small things. And Doug indicated that with the, the review of the code, each time that you change the code, it's, it's really a pretty big procedure that costs money to change little things. So he said there's a couple other departments that are going to start reviewing town code as well. 
So he said, it, and it made sense that, that um, rather than each of us, you know, let's do our little piece now and somebody else do a little piece then and everybody pay the bill to have that done is, is let's get a lot of things happening at once to review the town code and, and get everybody's um, pieces and parts changed at the same time and kind of make one big change. So um, really it's pretty easy to, 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 to pick through and, and get rid of, um, you know, the, the, the mentions of the, of the parks and rec and, you know, maybe a few other things will come up as we look through it and say, hey, it'd be nice to change that. And times have changed and maybe, you know, we got to put vaping in there along with no smoking and things like that. So, but th those really are pretty minor changes that doesn't seem to spend a lot of money and a lot of town time and town board time doing those, you know, piecemeal. It makes, it really makes a lot of sense to do it as a big chunk. So, uh, you know, I that out and, and if something jumps up at you or if you have a neat new idea let's let's not lose those ideas and um, you know we'll put all those things together so uh, trail work the trails continuing I, I was shocked talking to, to Sam and to Doug um, but really there's still a lot going on with with the two groups they, they kind of took a hiatus there you know during the COVID things themselves but um, there's still a lot of work there, there's one group working from uh, from Thomas Road North working on getting easements, working on the best spot for a trail, but, but really making progress and, and, you know, ready to come back within the next month or two with, with a kind of a, a, an outline of what they've done, but making that connection all the way up through to the Auburn Trail. Another group working from, from Thomas Road back to Outhouse Park, a little bit of a snag with the county, and, and I know that, that Doug's working through that to figure out maybe the county's not real happy about crossing uh, County Road 30. So we might have to shift where that crossing is gonna be a little bit, but it, it's one of those things where, you know, you think it's gonna be free and easy that we wanna walk from here to there, but, but there's, you know, a lot, of, a lot of T's and a lot of I's that have to get crossed and dotted to, to get from here to there. So, but it, it's encouraging knowing that all those things are still under motion and, and still working on, so. We actually um, have a meeting. You know, that that part of it really is still going. Sorry, yeah, and we I'm actually sorry, have Sam, a meeting ahead. tomorrow for the Auburn Trail too. So, um, yeah, things are still moving along. Um, we we had we had um, mocked up some things there for a little bit of a of a report for the um, or, or a flyer for the benches to get out to um, to have sent out in a newsletter. And just about ready to send that out when Sam's like, wait a minute, these, these plaques are fading on the benches, the, yeah. the, the oh, original geez. plaques, which really, that was the reason we bought one plaque at a time and wanted to see how it would hold yeah. up. And so Sam's been in contact and, and found a, more of a UV resistant plaque. So yeah, um, I think Sam, you said you, you're ready to jump out in, in far as get that out to the, the public now that the pitch for sponsorships for the plaques. Yeah, so my plan is to get that in the next newsletter um, for the bench sponsorship. So, and Adeline, actually, I wanted to ask you, did I tell you that the your plaque has been installed? No, I didn't know that, but okay. awesome. Okay. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, so it, uh, it's been installed at Outhouse, so. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have... I'm UV. I'm sorry, what did you say? Mine is one of the new UV ones, correct? Yep. yep. And the company um, we got them from, I had told him like um, they're fading and he replaced the two that we had without any charge. So they're, they're really good to work with the company. And then and then I had ordered yours, you know, with the UV sensitive. So um, hopefully going forward, it sounds like they're still looking pretty good and they've been up the one at Miller Park's been up for about a month or so now. Um, but we have Dave Sauter's plaque at Miller Park, Adeline's at Outhouse, and then Tom and Martha Schwartz sponsored one at Pierce Park. So so hopefully get that out. I thought, I thought you had indicated that Dave had to come up with another $400 for a new plaque, I thought you had said. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> to tell him, but Bill's in the mail. Um, he's on mute. He's gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> do, I, um, I get, do I get to rebut? Do I get rebut? <laughs> or... Your time's up. 
No, Trent, that's what the moderator is. If I'm the moderator, you get no rebuttal. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so, hopefully so it that's sounds like that's moving forward. Sam, you, you had said there's, um, you're working with Troy about maybe some, some more benches and, and figuring yep. out a good spot for those benches. So yep, there will just, be some more installed in the future. Yep. I just talked to him earlier this week. He's gonna, we're gonna see where they're all placed right now and then get a plan to get the other 12 placed, um, this fall once they slow down a little bit. So hopefully those get in this year too. We have the benches. They're, they just need to be installed, so. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, we, we, next thing on the agenda, we did talk, um, there's really a lot of work going on at Outhouse Park. It might not, when you drive by, it might not look like a lot of physical work there, but um, it, in talking to Doug, there's really been, there's been a lot of coordination between uh, the highway department, MRB, um, some different associations that, that Doug threw out there that I didn't even know what they meant, but they, they were, um, they're, they're really doing a good job making sure that the, the, this utility matches with that utility and the, the playground fits in where it should. And all of those things really, um, I, I guess maybe a little different than the way uh, Blue Heron Park ended up, hey, here's some land, let's have a park. So, uh, you know, they're really putting a lot of thought in, in, in planning and coordination as it should be so that, so that, you know, everything fits right and we don't end up with, you know, a swamp behind the soccer field and we don't end up with, um, we can't do something here because now there's an electrical line or, but there's really a lot of kind of behind the scenes work happening right now to make sure that when that all does come together, it, it, it really, it truly comes together and, and, um, especially with the playground fitting in there. Doug said there's, there's really been a lot of progress on the playground and they're really right on the verge of, of kind of taking off with, with um, pushing that forward. So Sam, I know you probably sat in on a couple of meetings with all that. And yeah, there was actually a meeting last week, Tuesday. Uh, it was like MRB, me, Doug, uh, the playground, inclusion in motion, and even park attacks, the people building the playground and they had MRB had drafted up like a layout and everybody like discussed, okay, what about this? What about handicap unloading? All So they have to go back and get a new drawing, but it was really good to get everybody's input. And, you know, I think they're on the right path with, um, with the layout of the park itself. Um, and then I think they're, Last I knew they were going to schedule a ribbon cutting for this fall. Um, I, I'm going to guess it might be October, October at this point. Um, and then the playground inclusion in motion, that group, they did a really cool activity at outhouse park where they had um, the kids come in and paint tiles that are then going to be placed at the park. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, they're still, yeah, trying to move right along. So it's going good. And, and, and again, another one of those things where we don't, you know, you know we don't see a lot going on, but uh, I, I was amazed sitting down with you guys and, and hearing all the kind of behind the scenes stuff that really still, it, it's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So, uh, MRB has been doing a lot of survey work and you, know, um, like you said to make sure it's right. everything's in the right place. And the other thing that, that came out, oh, maybe a month or so or a month and a half ago, um, and again, kind of another outhouse thing, but there was a resident that lives over in, um, what, what's across the road there from, uh, I can't think of it. Old, old Brookside. And um, very concerned about the crosswalk right there at the bottom of that hill as you come down Buffalo Street Extension. And all of a sudden, it goes from 55 to 30 right where there's a crosswalk. So... And, and I took a couple of bike rides over there, a couple walks over there, and, and I, I think she's got a pretty good point. So the the really the, the Parks and Rec Committee doesn't have a, a, a big role in it. Um, the I guess it's got to come through the town clerk, and so everything's been forwarded to the town clerk about requesting a traffic study through the state. So it all the town can't go in and say, hey, we want a reduction in traffic speed. We you know, we can't do any of that, but um, the town of Canandaigua through the town clerk's office will be, I, I, I'm pretty sure that, that um, 
Gene said that's going to go out, right? Sam, there's going to be yeah, a resolution Doug, to the town board. Yeah, Doug forwarded that to Gene, and I think there will be a resolution on the October agenda to um, request the um, speed study. But it, but if you think about that stretch now from where you would turn into the dump and then you come by a housing development and then you come by, you know, the turn that goes into Old Brookside and you get to the bottom of that hill and all of a sudden there's, you know, these teeny little flashing lights with, you know, a, a family crossing to go, you know, walk in the park. So I, I always um, felt that way too. Like, cause I drive that way all when I go into town, the city, and it's always super weird cause I'm going like 60 and then I slow down and I never know what speed to go in between. <laughs> it's just a weird yeah. spot. Yeah. If, you're going is, if you're going 60, you're speeding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speed. The attack. <laughs> Don't worry, Lily. I've ridden with Randy before. Don't don't let him fool you. So, but so that that's really more for. We kind of didn't know what the process was. That, that um, the woman had sent you know a couple emails. So um, Doug kind of set us straight on where that was going to go. So, but more of a of a um, FYI for everybody that, that that is something out there. And I think the more use that park's going to get, I think maybe the, the the bigger issue that might become. So. Um, talking with Doug about this playground again just more information they're talking this is going to be the the the, the creme de la creme of of inclusive playgrounds what the, on the entire east coast so you know this is going to be the spot where when someone else wants to do this this is the playground they're going to come look at so there, there's pretty pretty high praise for what they're doing here so it's going to be a, a, a interesting thing so um, next thing on here, a non to cabin improvements, kind of a starting to think about a long range plan, but the biggest thing I think it's, um, it's til tilapia. Sam, it's is that the, Latani. cause that's a fish. What's that? <laughs> it's Latani. That's the, oh, so Latani. tilapia is a fish. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking yeah. tilapia. So, so there's a cabin on Onanda Uplands. It's right in the, it's the one right in the middle. It has a perfect view of the lake. And it really needs updating or replacing. And for like a year now, Doug and Troy and myself have been talking about, okay, do you buy the lumber? You build a cabin? Do you buy one of those already made cabins and place it there? So um, I think Doug's hope is to do something with that cabin this budget year, um, if possible. It is in... The 2021 budget, I think there's like 20 or $25,000, but the plan is to maybe get one of those already made cabins, maybe with a bathroom in it, um, and place that there right, you know, right in the middle with a great view of the lake and see how that goes. Um, they're also doing a lot of survey work on the uplands, different talks of driveways to cabins and utility lines and all that, so there's going to be a lot of planning um, for the uplands, especially at Onanda. So. And, and thinking about the possibility and, and it, it seemed like this, this, um, this prefab cabin was, it was cheaper to bring in a prefab cabin than yeah. to try to repair structurally what was there in some of these old cabins. Yeah. And, and maybe start, you know, thinking about, let, let, let's look at the uplands and, you know, maybe there's a better spot. Those of you, anyone that's gone down to Ontario County Park and, and you see some of the cabins that they've installed back out in the woods and some of those cabins that, you know, maybe maybe we're underutilizing that upper area a little bit. And if, if we could do a little better job with, with some access and things like that, maybe there's a spot to, you know, bring one of these prefab cabins in and increase, you know, a nice spot to stay and, and increase the, the use of the uplands there a little bit. So that's really more of a long range plan for us to start thinking about what are the, what are the types of things that we could do and maybe design some sort of transport. Um, one, of, one of the concerns some of the, the visitors always have is how do I get my stuff up to those cabins? So, you know, one, once MRB did go in and survey all the utilities and figure out where you can drive and can't drive. And, um, you know, those types of things are things that the highway department can do you know, it's not like it's a huge expenditure. There is, you know, there's, there's budget costs there, but, um, you know, some, some ways to, to better utilize that upper area and kind of along that same thing. I know um, just, just more informational, the, um, some of the guests had complained about being able to drive to cabins and maybe drove around the rocks down at, at um, the lakeside Onanda. 
um, really to unload at their cabins and everything. So um, the town went out and they bought a number of those, you know, you go to Mayflowers and you see those big wagons that you can pull with all your, your things on it. So there's several of those wagons now available. So the guests that come to Onanda, they don't have to drive around those rocks, but they can make a trip or two back and forth with those wagons, which I thought was an awesome idea. But they were finding people were driving over top of the septic system. They were driving over the water lines. They were driving over all these things down at the, you know, the lower Onanda. So, um, you know, hopefully something like that with, with the wagons and, and here you go, help yourself, park it back here when you're done. And, you know, that's better than any of the state campgrounds I went to this summer where if, if you have a cabin way back there, guess what? You're going to, you know, you're going to pack it in and you're going to go. But yeah. so I thought it was a great idea to, to, to have some of those wagons there. So. But, so anything else, any questions on Onanda, the, you know, with cabins or with anything down there? Nope. Um, the, the next thing I have, just, I just wanted to, to kind of circle back. We had talked about the gypsy moth um, concern and it, it seems the, the, really the tree committee has taken on quite a bit of of, and and, and um, Sarah's taken on quite an interest in looking at the issue. Uh, Say so who's who's the who's the guy at FLCC? Ryan. Ryan Stachuk. Um, he's on the planning. Oh, Stachuk. So so he he's really taken on a, a a pretty active role. And I don't know if anybody watched the webinar or or joined the webinar, but but there's a kind of a concerted um, effort with with. The town's taking part, and and there's some other groups that are taking part with the with the gypsy moth issue, and really looking into to what is the best approach, a coordinated approach rather than a piecemeal approach, and um, you know, kind of the the cost and, and things like that to to be able to attack it on a big scale. So, um, I know I'd sent out an email earlier, and there I got a couple of response from some people that I think joined that committee and, and um, at least went to the webinar, and I've seen some some follow up. So. That is that that hasn't been lost. It hasn't been forgotten. So that is kind of a um, a focus that you know, kind of if you keep track of the town website and things, you'll see more things there. So, but so any 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 other others? Oh, I guess I I jumped ahead. I, I do have to, we we do have to touch base with Lily. Lily's getting old, so. <laughs> um, it, it, if, if we if we do look back to the town code, the things that are still there is is once a, a um, the youth member reaches nineteen, we got to boot them off. So I don't know, Lily, are you nineteen yet? No, I'm not even eighteen. <laughs> You're not I'm perfect. Not. Oh <laughs> but I mean, I turn eighteen next month. Um, I, I just I okay. So my school email deleted, and I felt so bad because. I realized that I'm not getting any of the emails. So Sam texted me and I totally just didn't realize. Um, so yeah, my, my, I can, I mean, here I am like kind of busy with schoolwork and stuff, but like, if you still want me on the committee, like I can, it's like, I, it's, it's hard because I have to do both and stuff. I don't know. But like, if you guys wanted to like keep me or if you wanted to talk to, uh, I think Mrs. Ekdahl recommended me. I don't know, like what, whatever. It's up to you guys. I, I can do whatever. <laughs> But yeah, well, I, well, I, am, I am not 19 yet though, so. <laughs> no. well, 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 let's, let's touch base then. And, and if, it, if it looks like something that you're gonna be back in the summer and-, and Oh yeah, I don't, like I definitely um, wanna keep this thing, like 100%, like would wanna do that. <laughs> okay. So, like, so I, I just wanted to, to kind of get your feelings and make sure that we're, you know, on the right page if we need to be and everything else, so. Yeah. So maybe yeah. that we can, that can be a back burner item. You know, so. I can I can give you my 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 email like so I can you know you have my new one if you want. Um, <laughs> it's it's loganlily3 at gmail .com. So that that would be better because my school one, um, since I'm not like in the district, I think that it's it's gone. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it is because I've sent you a ton of emails. I know <laughs> I feel so. so awful. <laughs> I like like once Sam texted me, I was like. <gasps> Oh no! <laughs> like yeah, so everything it was all gone. So no, my my new one is loganlily3 at gmail.com. So that one I will respond. I promise I check my emails. <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, does anybody any other 
really the last thing on the agenda is is any other items that anyone wants to bring up or thought about or that's come up we're, we're kind of um you know i said i said to sam and doug when i met i kind of feel like i've been out of the loop and and i've been off on my own little covid vacation here for the last uh Three or four months. We all feel that Once they way. make me go back to school and sit at my desk, I feel like I have to focus again. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have anything. I got nothing. Um, the oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't have anything. The, the, the other thing, and, and and I think, I think the events committee was coming out with an email, maybe Sam or or uh, uh, something yeah, about. They, they they discussed trying to do something at Onanda for Halloween and and really they approached really weren't comfortable with a lot of people weren't comfortable with setting up something down there or or right. establishing something and the uncertainty and everything else so the the Halloween event for Onanda is off for the year so and yeah. that's, honestly. <laughs> So any any other anybody got anything else? I'm all nope. set. Good. I'm all good. Thanks, Mark. Yes, thank you. Oh, I, Sam does all the hard work. I, I just sit down with her once in a while and she fills me in on all the facts. So. <laughs> thanks, Sam. But, okay, the, the our our next meeting that is scheduled for October twenty eighth. Um I I mean I'm I'm a sit down and see everybody person but you know, know. With, with the with the still with the regulations and the governor still is is asking that that meetings be um multiple options it's, it's really a lot easier to to do a full virtual than to try to do some people set up and some people not and um you know it, yeah. so okay depending on what's what it looks like october 28th if, if if we still have this, I, I think probably it's just as easy for everybody to touch base with with the Zoom and to talk and and go from there. So yeah, the other thing is but, that I'm not like so October twenty eighth and, and any anything else, please drop me a note or, or anything and and um, hopefully I bump into some of you between now and then and and we'll see you later. So okay. Sam, thanks. thanks for for sharing the evening thanks, with Sam. us. Yeah, so, thanks everybody. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. I didn't even hear a baby crying in the background. She's in the so, living room. I'm in the I'm in the playroom. She's in the living room. With okay. Jeff. <laughs> Good daddy. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. We'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.